The only source of knowledge is experience. That, of course, is a quote from Albert Einstein that I randomly looked up on Brainy Quote. And I will now use that as a weird philosophical tie-in to my knowledge of having experienced shadow. I like to be educated, but I'm so frustrated. What is shadow? Shadow is a cloud computing service. So basically you sign up and somewhere in the data center it's like, oh, this is your CPU now, and this is your GPU now, and this is your storage. And then you get this little tiny program, the, the shadow clients, which you can open up, log in, and then you can use that to use your cloud computer. The benefit of this is you don't need to have a very powerful system to use, a, use big games or big software. And you can use your shadow from anywhere where you have internet. Now, why did I want to have a shadow? Many of you probably know that I use Linux. It's right in my name, Silas on Linux. The, my YouTube channel name, not my real name. That is very nice, but sometimes you can't run certain programs. Like the thing that I want to use for editing my podcasts. Descript. Doesn't run on Linux, does it? <laughs> Absolutely not. You, you try to install it and it just like flickers around and shit. Another moderately big problem that I have is right there, Intel Arc. Yeah, yeah, I have an Intel Arc card. I really like it, but a lot of software just still doesn't work with it. So my first thought was, why don't I do like a virtual, virtual machine through my old GPU, a 1060, which is still fine for most things. But no, you can't do that because it's a GeForce gaming card. And they, of course, NVIDIA doesn't allow you to use this in a virtual machine because, oh, you need to pay for this stupid fucking workstation card, which is just this with a different name on it. Absolutely happy with NVIDIA. So happy. I love it so much. That's why I have this now. See, that's how much I like NVIDIA and the fuck. I tried using Shadow on Linux. The first thing you see that is done is right there on the download page. Look at it. Just look at it. I don't even understand this methodology. It's a deb package. It's from Debian. Why do they always use the Ubuntu logo if they show, uh, if they give you a Debian package? It's not the same. It's just Debian with some shit added on top of it. <laughs> By the way, I have a podcast, a technology podcast. It's called Uploaded, and it's about technology. We usually do an episode every week, every Wednesday. We try to do it anyways. And it's about tech things, tech and gaming, and some random loot stuff. SilasTV.live slash uploaded. Visit that link, SilasTV.live slash uploaded. And follow on your favorite podcast app. So I'm already not very happy with that because I use SUSE, I use Tumbleweed. Not everybody uses Debian or Ubuntu. Not only do I have Tumbleweed on my main desktop PC, I also have this, which is a ThinkPad where it has Windows 11 on it and Ubuntu 22.10. It's right there, right here, Ubuntu. We'll get to that. Hang on. So I'm already annoyed because, oh no, I need to use an app image, which is fine. I would prefer a flat pack. I would also prefer just an RPM package, but of course nobody ever makes those. So what was my first experience like? Well, see for yourself. Let's start the shadow PC. Let's see how quick this connects while you're streaming. Okay, try to update your graphics drivers on your device and disable high. Oh no, HEVC! Intel Arc, why? No acceleration for H265. Hopefully it works now because I'll be actually upset. No, after having changed some options, some configuration things, it started working a bit better. Software decoding, please. I'm pretty sure that's the reason why it doesn't work because we have Intel Arc. Oh, there it goes. It's on the wrong screen. 
Why does it go to the other screen when I say enter full screen? Don't do that. Make it not vertical. Oh, there we go. Oh, can you see that there? It's like, it's like stopping and starting again. Unstable connection. But it still looks really blurry. I've talked to people on Reddit about this and they're all like, yeah, it does look very blurry on Linux for some reason. So that's not very good, is it? Somebody suggested to me I should run it at the same resolution as my monitor is and at the same frame rate. So that would be 120 hertz at 1440p resolution because that's what my screen runs at. I tried doing that. You can see that happening right in there, right here. Doesn't look very good. I don't know why. It looks really choppy and crap. Which, by the way, is the same thing that happens when I run H.265 decoding. But the biggest thing for that is you have to put it in full screen mode, right? When you make it full screen, 1440p video on a 1440p screen, the pixels would line up, which means it would look pretty good. And it looks better than in a window, but no, because for some reason, the mouse is just not correct. The mouse cursor doesn't line up. Oh. That is very interesting. So you can't use the mouse cursor in f when, when Shadow is in full screen, apparently. That, was, that it has been a consistent thing, at least on my system, because now it's fine. But when it's in full screen, it's like not doing it. So what I've, what I, then did, I would use the mouse and stuff in windowed mode. And then when I was in a game, I would put it in full screen because that makes that, that then it's fine because I'm using a little controller or I'm just like moving my camera around and stuff. You don't actually have to see where the mouse cursor is there because you don't have a mouse cursor. So that was fine. Still not optimal. Also, this happens. Oh my god, really? Turn sometimes when it's... Oh my god, what the hell? Well, that was clear, that sucked. That was a one hiccup at the worst time ever. Oh my god, oh my god. So I feel like sometimes the latency goes really high. I have tried it on Windows, which, yeah, very cool because it looks a lot nicer. It actually does look pretty sharp on them. If this is the game's fault, then it is this pixelated. I think that means it is doing a very good job at transmitting it, but it looks- Even with my stupid laptop being on Wi-Fi because it's a business laptop. What do businesses need? Stable networks? No. So it looks nicer on, on Windows. Very good, but as you can see, it had weird other issues. I try to move the mouse, it does this now. It looks like the laptop is dying, but clearly not because it's just like fuck completely fine there. Oh, that's the Windows menu in Shadow. I am... Um, I... Oh my god. I'm so confused as to what's going on. Okay. This is some... This is crazy. Task Manager. So this is... The shut. Okay, I can't play Forza Horizon 5 because, uh, incorrect platform. But it worked before. Shadow. This also doesn't work, but it's a different error message now. Absolutely fantastic. What a fucking load of crap this is. 
Really? Okay, so not only does Steam not work, but also Epic Games Store also doesn't work. There's this weird thing where if you're in a full screen application and you want to switch out a bit again, at least on Linux, I don't think it happens on Windows, but at least on Linux, you can't actually switch out of the program which if it's crashed because the GNOME Activities view, if you press the super key, because for some fucking reason it's not locked or whatever. Maybe that's on me, maybe you can do that and I just did it wrong. Believe it or not, that would make me look really stupid. And then, suddenly, multiple mouse cursors appeared. Look at them. Look at it. Isn't that amazing? Didn't you always want multiple mouse cursors for no real reason other than to just confuse you and make it look stupid? Well, if you didn't want that, you can also have no mouse cursor whatsoever. What? I have a capture card, it's in there right now. When the capture card is not being used, it kind of gets reset every second or two. I don't know why that is. For example, in Discord, I get a message saying, oh, there's a new audio device. Do you want to use it? Yes, no, don't ask again. If I click no or yes, and then the card, like, uh, the, the card resets itself a second later again, you get the same message again. So you just click on don't ask again. Guess what Shadow doesn't have. They don't have a don't ask again button. They just have an enable button. Why? I don't know. I contacted their support. They asked me a few things. Their suggestion in the end was I should go into device manager or the equivalent in my operating system and just deactivate the device whenever I want to use Shadow which is not a good solution. That's a horrible solution. Completely crap solution. This one only has 76 blue holes in it. What the hell? I did not press that. I did not press right there. I am telling you, literally, I don't, I did not press that. Is someone at Shadow, like, got an Xbox controller plugged in and is like, oh, well, let's just, it's my last day today. Let's just fuck with people on, on Shadow right now. But, what the hell? Go forward, left, left. And then they went on to ask me, oh, what operating system are you running? I wrote, open through the tumbleweed. And guess where this is going? They said, it's not supported. And let me look this up again in my emails because it's so stupid. It's actually really dumb. I almost dropped my phone, but I caught it. Shadow only officially supports Ubuntu. So currently, currently, we are at version 22.10. The way that these numbers work is the first number is the year, and the second number after the, the period is the month that it's in. So the only versions they support officially is Ubuntu. 18.04 and 19.10. Now we'll give them this, okay. 18.04, that's an LTS release. That means that the company making Ubuntu are gonna support it for a long time and keep making up for it for, for, it for a long time. And uh, guess when that is ending? It's, end, it's going end of life, which is when it's unusable, in April 2023. Okay. Cool. And 19.10 was not an LTS release. So guess what happened with that? That has been end of lie, which is effectively shut down. You cannot, you, you can install it if you have some old files, however, but it's almost unusable because like you can't install things anymore. And it's just, it's just crap. Don't, don't use an end of life distro if you don't have to. It has gone end of life, the 17th of July, 2020. I don't know what to say to that. I mean, I did say that is pretty stupid. It's an end of life, unusable Linux version. Why support this? Why not support anything else? And that also means literally 
22.10 is also unsupported. So if you have the newest version of Linux, Ubuntu Linux on this, and you have a problem and you ask them and they're like, oh, what is what, what, what this thing are you running? And you say 22.10, they will not help you. I don't think they'll help you. They'll help you up until the point where you say, yeah, I'm running 22.10 or yeah, I'm running Tumbleweed. Yeah, I'm running uh, fucking like Debian or Arch or some shit. That makes me really angry. That is like, oh, if you want to use Shadow on a Windows PC, you can only use Windows Vista. Does that seem logical to you? I'm really annoyed by this. I really wanted to like it. Now I have to cancel it again and I feel like I've absolutely wasted my bloody money on this. Okay, I've looked it up <laughs> about Tumblr, actually. Mm -hmm. So they were bought by Yahoo slash Verizon for yeah, one are. for one point one billion. That was yeah, fine. And then the adult ban happened and all things like that. And then and then Verizon sold it to Automatic for three million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. 